رباه عفوك إني للنور مدة يداي نزعت أسرار قلبي وجبت ألقي أسايا إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محتثاتها وإن كل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد السلام عليكم Rahmatullah barakatuh, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers and beloved youth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to unite us in the most beautiful places on his wide expanse of earth, the Masajid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us families, fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters who love the Masjid, who are connected to the Masjid always and make it the center of their lives. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear elders and youth, I am no sheikh, I am no imam, I am literally just one of you, as you know. You see my face pretty much every week. I have the honor and privilege of serving this community as a volunteer and as part of the board. I take these opportunities on the minbar seriously because when there is a time and place for us to send a message to the, to the community, there is no better place than to do it from here. And such was the strategy of the Prophet as well. And I'm going to share with you a couple of observations to start off with and then end with a, with a very small ask that all of you can do something after the khutbah inshallah ta'ala because that's often the, the takeaway, right? We want something to do, something to hold on to from week to week. So the first observation I will make inshallah is that we are now at the 7 to 8 week mark from October 7th. We've heard that date in the media so much now and for good and bad reasons, right? There's one side of the camp who says it all started on October 7th and we know it didn't. It's a 75 year history of the people of Palestine being oppressed but the media will have you believe it all happened on October the 7th. But anyway, that point aside, October, the, the seven to eight weeks I'm talking about is generally, we're now at the point, if you look at it from a social collective memory, of how trends work. You know, there's a trend, there's a fad that comes, everyone jumps on the bandwagon. It's the hot issue of the day. It could be a new product in the market, it could be a social issue, it could be a political issue. Whatever it is, the social collective memory starts to wane down right about now. The latest news, maybe I'm a little behind for those of you who keep up with the news, is there's a, there's a truce deal, a, a kind of a ceasefire, but not really a ceasefire, for four days between the two parties that are purportedly in a conflict, but you know, it's, it's much more than that. So now this is the time where people say, oh, okay, things are calming down, it's okay, and little by little, the next trend, the next thing on our social media starts to grab our attention, and this happens every single time that the people of Palestine are in difficulty. 2006, 2009, 2011, 14, 16, 19, 21, and now 2023. 20, As the Muslim Ummah rises, two months hot-headed, we have a fever going around, and two months later, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, that happened, right? 10,000 died, 15,000, subhanAllah, and we move on. But this is the time. This is this time in the trajectory of the people of Gaza, what they're experiencing. For them, it could be seven years, it could be 75 years, the reality hasn't changed. And neither it should for us. My khutbah today, inshallah, is titled Reviving Long-Term Thinking. But I don't want to do it from my words. 
The best of speech is the Book of Allah. And we're going to look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this idea of a word called Ajr. Ain, Jeem, Lam. Ajr. And it appears 47 times in the Quran. And you know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats something, it's not random. There's, it's not by chance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make a point to the listener and the reader. So you can have ajul, you can have ajala, ajil, and in different forms. Many of them describing the psychology of man. SubhanAllah, the Quran is not necessarily a book of psychology. The Quran does talk about the psychology of man. Just like the book, Quran is not a book of history, but it does give you historical snapshots over time. So psychology, understanding how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes one of the defining characteristics of man is important so we don't fall in the trap time after time when the situation presents us to do otherwise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, He presents the example of two people in Surah Al-Isra, Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man kana yuridu al-ajila ta'ajjalna لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَى لِمَنْ نُرِيدْ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ جَهَنَّمْ يَصْلَهَا مَذْمُومًا مَدْحُورًا Okay, keep that in mind. The first example, the first prototype is the one who desires يُرِيدُ مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say the dunya. He doesn't say مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا عَاجِلَةِ We'll come back to this because there's a very heavy point in this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the one who desires this عَاجِلَة we will make it even quicker. So if you pick up any Arabic English dictionary, Ajal is described mostly as haste. Rapid, quick. These are the, the, the verbs that come to mind. But there's a connotation here. There's many connotations because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses language, no one can. So there's layers and layers of meanings. Amongst them is premature. Something that happens before it's time. So the one who desires عَاجِلَةً One who desires something that's quick. I want it now. We want a ceasefire now and everything will be okay. Just, give, just make it happen now. What's the problem? Right? This is the kind of rhetoric we hear in our dinner parties or, or wherever we are last night, Thanksgiving. I'm sure many of you were with friends and family. This topic must have come up. What we want and we want it now. It's not bad. There's nothing wrong with demanding what needs to happen now. What the problem is, is to stop there. You understand? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He says, Man kana yurid al-ajila, yurid even, is in the present tense. Meaning you are so engrossed in that situation in the short term that you don't see as they say in English, past your nose. It's the short term vision. People are, are in trouble, people are dying. That needs to stop, but there's no further thinking than that. Then what? Then what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Ajallah, we'll, we'll make it happen. It'll, it'll, it will expedite whatever that ajallah is. However, فِيهَا مَا نَشَى لِمَنْ نُرِيدْ For whoever we desire. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمْ يَصْلَهَا مَذْمُومًا مَذْحُورًا Now, there's different connotations of this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say about particularly he who desires the life of the world only. A kafir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him amongst مَذْمُومًا مَذْحُورًا يعني those who are condemned and rejected. So it's a negative connotation. You understand this point? When the word ajal comes up, عُجُول الْعَاجِلَ It's a connotation of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fine, have it. And don't come back to me. You madhmoom madhoom. Kind of like a slap in the face. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the prototype. What does he say next? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on to say, وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ And for, as if, for him who, who desires the akhirah. Now, akhirah, the first connotation we always think of is the life of the hereafter. And that's not wrong. Absolutely. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word akhirah. But we also know akhir can, mean, can be used to mean something that comes later. Something in the future. Something that is not here right now, but I have to think about it and overlook the, future, the current for the future. You understand? So we do this all the time. 
We say, okay, you know what? I will live in this small one-bedroom apartment for five years because I need to save up for the five-bedroom house. Right? So now you are thinking about something that is later. Akhir. The connotation here, of course, is one that looks be even beyond this life. But the important thing to take away, my dear brothers and sisters, is the thinking beyond the, the here and now. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will, inshallah, out of His mercy, and out of His grace, and out of His wisdom, grant us what we require now. And this is, for, by the way, for the kafir and for the Muslim. We don't see all the, the kuffar, the disbelievers, all on the streets homeless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for them. Many of them in positions of power. Go back to Man kana yuridul ajila, one who desires now power, fame, glory, give it here, take it. But there's consequences for that later. Madhuma madhura. Wa man kana arad al akhirata sa'alaha sa'yaha. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then say about the one who desires the akhirah? Desiring is not enough. Hmm? Desiring is not enough. I can sit in my house and say, Ya Allah, give me the akhirah. Give me jannah. Save me from the adab al qabr. Ameen. And I'd sit on my couch to nothing. The key word there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then qualifies that. Man kana arad al akhirata sa'alaha sa'yah. You gotta work. It's from the word sa'i. Right? The same word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses in elsewhere in the Quran as well. Sa'i, my dear brothers and sisters, very interestingly, is not used in the ayah before. So when you desire the here and now, Ya Allah, give me a house, give me a car, give me kids, give me a wonderful husband, or a wonderful wife, give me the, the picture perfect, as they call American dream, or whatever dream of this global world, right? Oh, okay, that's fine. You want it? Work a little for it? Here you go. But things of the future, things that are worth something, Sa'alaha Sa'yaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in, includes the word Sa'a laha that you work for it for what is worth working for. Wahua mu'min. The ayah goes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then qualifies that. Wahua mu'min fa'ulaika subhanahu. Listen to this. Those three conditions are met, right? If you want to be amongst this prototype, you want to be this person, the first thing is you desire what's later. Akhirah is one connotation. Desiring the hereafter, 100%, you should do that. But desiring something that is beyond this now and here is also another connotation. Someday my kids will need a bigger masjid. Think beyond where you are sitting right now and think about our city and our homes and our community 10 years from now. Today, McKinney is 210,000 people. By 2025, it's going to be 400,000 people. You think we can serve those people in this masjid? Woman, arad al Think long term. Think long term. That's number one. Sa'alaha sa'ya. You gotta do something for it. You can't just, oh yeah, we should have a bigger masjid. That'd be nice. And sit here do nothing. And we'll talk about that opportunity that's coming up on December 3rd. It's one opportunity. And you have to be qualified by belief. Because if you disbelieve, you can still have this long-term thinking and effort. And Allah will grant that from His wisdom. But in this particular case, there's three qualifications. So if you are desiring the future, if you are working for it, Sa'alaha Sa'yaha. Interesting point, I forgot to make. Sa'alaha Sa'yaha is not qualified with a threshold. There's no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give a definition. If you give 5,000, that is Sa'a. If you work this many hours, that is Sa'a. No, it should feel like a Sa'alaha Sa'yaha to you. So if you have $100 in your bank, and you give 10, and you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna have to skip my medication this, this month, or something's gotta go for my budget, because this deserves my 10 bucks. That is Sa'alaha Sa'yaha. You may be a millionaire and give that 10 bucks, it's not Sa'a. Don't fool Allah, don't fool yourself. Sa'a is not qualified. Sa'a is dependent on your situation, and Sa'a by definition should be uncomfortable. You think, Sayyidah Hajar, alayhi salam, when she was running between the two mountains, what we call Sa'i in Umrah, right? 
And now, even now, those who go for Umrah, you're supposed to jog between the lights and all of that. Is that comfortable? Is that supposed to be a nice walk in the park? No, it's effort. You're supposed to put an effort. That is a symbolic effort. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about sa'alaha sa'yaha, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. So inshallah, if you, let's say, are one of the people who have supported this community, and you've given 5,000 in the past, 10,000 of those is a little uncomfortable. But you can do it. You're not on the street. Your, your bills will be paid, but that vacation might have to go. Sa'alaha sa'ya. If you've given a dollar before, but two dollars is a little uncomfortable, Sa'alaha sa'ya. If you've given an hour, but two hours is a little much, Sa'alaha sa'ya. You understand this point? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't qualify or put a threshold on sa'a because it's dependent on each and every one of you to do your sa'i. For what? Man kana aradil akhirah. Keep in mind the future and do something for it. Now, I come to the, the cream, creme de la creme, as they say, right? The best part of the ayah. SubhanAllah, what do we all crave when it comes to effort? Right, many of us don't want money. We say, I don't want money. Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah Al-Najm, He describes a scene on the Day of Judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَىٰ وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَىٰ the angels are all together and insan are brought in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for judgment. And insan is taught on that day, that on that day you will be shown nothing but is it a, is a result? No, it's effort. Now, now, this, this is, is, imagine, imagine, this is sort of the, the equivalent of, and my dear brothers, if you can, inshallah, fill up the gaps to the, to the front. There's a lot of brothers waiting in the lobby, inshallah ta'ala, to get it. Please let them in, inshallah ta'ala. And brothers in the back, please start uh, making your way. The equivalent of اللَّيْسَ insani illa ma sa'a is imagine yourself getting a big reward on an award or, award or something, recognition, and you're in a stadium full of people being recognized for what you did. What the point I'm trying to make is many, for many of us, in where, 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 wherever we are in life, recognition is the number one thing we crave. Recognition from family, from friends, from co-workers, from bosses, from leadership, from community. That's what awards are all about. Imagine handing over an award to someone in a ceremony and there's no one sitting in front of you. Does it mean anything? You want to be live streamed. You want to have cameras on your, on your face. That's what recognition is all about. Now, keep that in, uh, in mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the psychology of men. We started with, You desire the future. You desire what's coming. You plan for it. You let go ajr. You let go of what it is, is here and now. Whatever that dollar amount is. Whatever that number of hours is. Whatever that sacrifice is. You let it go for akhir. Sa'alaha sa'yaha, and then you do something about it that feels like effort. I've done something. I feel uncomfortable, that's when you know it's sa'yah. If you feel comfortable, and you walk away, and you're like, I'm going to take my family out to a nice $200 meal, because I still have enough in the bank, that's not quite sa'yah. Right? Think about what sa'yah means. When you felt uncomfortable, sa'yah. Wa huwa mu'min. And you are a believer, you have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then finishes the ayah. فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا SubhanAllah. They are those whose effort Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never in this context, even in Surah Al-Najm or here, doesn't talk about result. Because Allah is way beyond that. Are you going to put a billion dollars in front of Allah and say, Ya Allah, this is worth something. Allah, billions are not worth anything. The one who is the master, the khaliq of all of this and beyond, there is nothing that we can put in front of him as a result that would equal his majesty. The only thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pulls out of that is sa'i. And he says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ They are the ones whose effort Whose effort will be appreciated. Whose effort will be appreciated. That's it. Sa'yuhum mashkura. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want our dollars and cents. All he asks is that you do something that is worth calling sa'i. For what? Not aj. For something that comes beyond, you might pass away. But something that your kids and their kids and their kids may enjoy because you did something when you were alive that was worth the effort. In the second khutbah, inshallah, I'll put, I'll put a, an opportunity in front of you, inshallah. الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباد الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاطب النبيين محمد صادق الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My dear brothers and sisters, we started with our our journey today, just like many of the khatibs the last four or five weeks have done with the people of Gaza. Now let's let's connect that back because I think that's an important point. Our contribution, and 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 if you if you're not aware of this. Let me, let me fill you in on what my observations have been, listening to analysts and commentators. Many of you are way ahead of me in that. But there's an individual by the name of Sami Hamdi, who's a, a political analyst or commentator. You agree with him or not, that's not my, I'm not here to convince anyone. But there are many good points this brother makes on different channels that are worth thinking about. Amongst them, he talks about the global public opinion and the importance of global public opinion and how it's shifting the narrative for the oppressor in what they're trying to do. There are billions, if you don't know this, there's billions being spent by Israel on propaganda. There's a reason. Naam? There's a reason behind this. Because global public opinion, you and you and you and you and, you and me, matter. Not the, not, the, not, the not the voices on the mic, the mic not the not voices on the shows. shows. The people matter. Global public opinion matters. And when you retweet or you like or you repost and you put your neck out there, by the way, that's another example of Sa'i. Many people who are reposting the voice of the Palestinians, the voice of the historical facts that have happened in this region, have lost their jobs. It's a lawsuit and everything, but the point is, it's putting your neck out. That's another kind of sa'i, by the way. Sa'alaha, sa'iyaha. If you're scared, my boss might see this on LinkedIn. Nah, man, I, I got my career to go. I'm not going to post. But it's your job. It's my job to take that moment, to put your neck out and say, okay. Allahu razaq, dhul quwwatin mateen. He's the one who provides. I lose this job, I'll get something else. But there are brothers and sisters for whom that is your weapon, that like button, that repost button, that Facebook post, whatever, to get the voice out because social media is the medium of our time. And if you back off and you say, you know what, I'm just going to watch from the sidelines, man. This is not for me. That's not sad. So when you ask yourself, what can I do? There's many things. But the one qualifier I'll give you today, it should feel like something that's worth the effort. If it doesn't feel that way, you haven't done enough. Let me finish, inshallah ta'ala, with a couple points that I had in mind. My dear brothers and sisters, if you look at very interesting facts, I was looking at the history of Zionism, okay, just overall, globally. And many of you would know by now, the 1917 Balfour Declaration that happened, that was the culmination of something, the World War I and everything that happened around that. The, the seeds were really planted in 1887-1888 by, by a gentleman or a journalist, Austrian-Hungarian Hungarian journalist by the name of Theodor Herzl. And Nathaniel Bar Berenbaum, Berenbaum was one of the founding fathers of the idea of the Jews returning back to the Holy Land. By the way, this is not about a faith. We love our Jewish brothers and sisters. We love our Christian brothers and sisters. This is about an ideology. And so Zionism has, has become a staple word now in the news. Interestingly enough, the Zionists were actually very small in Europe. And if you look at the start of the 20th century, so 1900s, early 1900s, early 1910s, 20s, do you know where most of the funding for that small group came from? American Zionists. 
in America, New York City. They organized a fundraiser at the time, and they wanted to raise one million dollars of 19 whatever, 05, 1910. That's equivalent. I looked at that. What's the consumer price index for that today? That's equivalent to 60 million dollars. And they raised it. They financed the idea because they believed in it. This is not about purporting one particular ideology. We need to learn. Muslims, what we've done when we abandon long-term vision, we don't look around. We just we're reactionary. Bombs are dropping. Stop the bombs. Stop the bombs. Stop the bombs. Then what? What about governance? What about humanitarian aid? What about getting Gaza back on its feet? What are we supposed to do about that? The long-term thinking is where we need to start. So, when I bring it back to what we can do, one of the things I, I picked up on with American Zionism and funding is they built institutions. HSS, the American arm, the United States arm of RSS, the Hindutva organization that is wreaking havoc on Muslims in India, is one of the biggest funders of the Hindutva ideology because it's American dollars. So you living in America earning a six-figure salary, what good is your dollar? What good is your Western Muslim identity when you can't fight with your dollars? No one's asking you to do anything more than give in the right place. And one of the best ways is to build institutions that strengthen communities, that strengthen people. You can give your money to humanitarian aid, not a problem. Great cause. That is reactionary. Do we as an ummah always want to live on humanitarian aid for the rest of our lives? We need a proactive strategy. One of those opportunities, it's not the only opportunity, and I'm not a know-it-all, so if there's something better, let me know. But one of the opportunities is having strong institutions that, that empower people with education, with knowledge, with programs that preserve Islam in our kids, so one day they grow up and they sit on the circuit for judges, as an appellate judge. Or there are lawyers, there are journalists out there that are people of influence. That's your job. No one's telling you to change careers and become a journalist, or become a lawyer. You've done what you wanted to do from studying and career, and all of that. But think, وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةِ سَعَالَهَا سَعْيَاهَا Desire, if we desire a better future for the Ummah, there is something you can do today. On December 3rd, my dear brothers and sisters, we have an opportunity with this, the fundraiser of this masjid. Many of you have come up to me personally, to our board, to the volunteers, and the number one issue, by the way, is parking. <laughs> right? It's kind of a, a running joke in McKinney, right? But it's not a joke. Because we need to fix these things, and there's nowhere to go, by the way. There's nowhere to go. We're neighbors on all sides that, to be quite frank, don't really allow us to park. You know this. Many of you have got, gotten cars towed. And you had to pay three, four hundred dollars to get your car back. These are real problems, my dear brothers and sisters, that I have gone through with you as well. Many of you, you know how much it pains me to see our elders having to walk from Tom Thumb. Hot days or cold days? Because we have to turn them away. You can't park here, they can absolutely get dropped off, not a problem. I'm telling you real problems. There are Issue days when we have to reject kids from Sunday school or after school because we don't have space in this masjid. And there's people telling us, I have no other option, my kids in public school. You know what public school is like these days. We want to take in as many children as possible to preserve Islam and those children, to give them the, the foundation that they need to fight their battle when they are 20 and 30. Because Allah knows, Allah Ta'ala Alam, but this world is getting a tougher place for people of Iman. وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةِ سَعَالَهَا سَعْيَهَا Do something. And the first thing is show up on December 3rd. Travel plans, I respect that. If you can move around, move around. Buy a ticket. There's tickets being sold outside today. Don't just walk by. If you can't be there, make sure, make sure someone's in your seat. And make sure that your dollars are making a difference towards our target. One million is nothing. One million, by the way, remember that one million that American Zionism uh, raised in 1905, 1906? To support an ideology that they agreed with. If you agree with a bigger mission, with more services, preserving the Islam of our community, and our children, 
and catering to the elderly and having parking so everyone's comfortable and then raising the next generation to be people of influence whatever that's worth to you you give i'm not going to put a price on it if it's worth five dollars give five dollars that's my only answer if it's worth twenty thousand then give your twenty thousand may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the people of the Qur'an, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst people of long-term vision. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be and walk in the precepts of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who thought long-term. When he looked at his sahaba, he thought long-term. One final point because I, I'd be remiss to not to mention this. Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam was a visionary. I'll give you one story. Suhail ibn Amr. Many of you might know this already, right? Suhail ibn Amr was the same Tongue and, and words, words and voice, the same man who came at the Treaty of Hudaybiyah to, uh, to negotiate on behalf of the disbelievers. And there were times when he was at the, the, the cusp of insulting the Prophet ﷺ, and Umar Umar wanted to pull his tongue out, cut his tongue out. Rasulullah stopped him and said, Wallah Umar, don't do that. Because one day it's this tongue that will spread Islam to all parts of Arabia. And what happened? When Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, and the wars of Ridd, Abu Bakr took over, and people started to uh, turn away. Murtad, the wars of Ridda started. Suhail ibn Amr was the one who got up in front of the Kaaba and told people, are you now going to turn away? Now that your Prophet is no longer with you, but Allah is with us all the time. Suhail ibn Amr. Imagine if Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allowed his tongue to be cut. Long-term thinking. Your enemy today will be your friend tomorrow. A small masjid today will be a big masjid tomorrow that caters to all of our needs, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our hearts in this dunya and the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make uh, the, the troubles of every single one of our households easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the knower of your heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you. The, the deepest of your heart's desires that is acceptable, that is pleasing to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be content with his will for that which is best for us and that which is the worst for us. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات والأحياه منهم والأوات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في غزة في فلسطين في كل عالم يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة